This webinar is part of the weekly Oracle at Oracle webinar series where you all will have the opportunity to hear from the executive team that reimagined Oracle. In the series of webinars, we will share insights from our own journey to the cloud and demonstrate how we are using Oracle Cloud to power our business and enable exceptional customer and employee experiences and share our learnings along the way so others can do the same. I'm Rachel Blackburn. I'll be your host for today's webinar. Let's dive into today's topic. So over the next 45 minutes or so, we'll hear about oracle.com's journey to Oracle Cloud. Now I'll hand it over to your webinar hosts for today, Tejas and Sudhir, to introduce themselves. Uh, hi, my name is Sudhir Dureja. I'm from Oracle IT, responsible for our implementation of our content and experience services for our intranet as well as for our external corporate sites. I'll hand over to Tejas. And my name is Tejas Shah. I am the Vice President of Engineering uh, for Oracle Content Experience and all the content products at Oracle. So next slide. So I'll just leave that on for a few seconds. Okay. Um, so the agenda for today is I'm going to give you a very quick overview of uh, Oracle Content Experience for those who might not know it. And uh, then Sudhir will take us through most of the implementation at Oracle use cases, intranet, extranet, and also public uh, corporate sites like oracle.com. So before we get into uh, content experience specifically, we, I wanted to talk about uh, how content is no longer just for websites anymore. Uh, and we'll play a small video for you. So Sudhir, just go ahead and play that now. So in this video, you can see this content on a website, but the same content can be accessed through a Slack, uh, Slack bot, right? And similar content can be accessed through Messenger. This is for some other website, but the content is still available through Messenger. Um, there are other channels, as you might know, you can have content being accessed through your marketing emails, it can be accessed through AR, VR, which we haven't shown over here, but lots of headless experiences as well. So what you need in, uh, is uh, content that can be stored and created in one place, but you, it can be served in multiple different channels. And go to the next slide, Sudhir. In addition to that, you also want to incorporate content uh, and all the in, in a lot of different journeys of your um, uh, customer experience, right? Including marketing, commerce, sales, et cetera. And then you want to take all the data and insights from all these experiences and then enhance the content based on that. And you want to be able to do that in a way that uh, is easy for your content contributors uh, leveraging machine learning and AI. And uh, as I said earlier, that the content now is no longer just for a website, it is for multiple experiences. So with that in mind, go to the next slide. This is what the Oracle Content Experience uh, product provides. It is the underpinning content provider for all our CX products. And at the center of it is the universal asset hub. An asset is anything that is uh, presented to the user. It could be an image, it could be a video, it could be a narrative, it could be an email uh, uh, excerpt, which, is, which can be created collaboratively by the con content contributors. Uh, and we make it very easy uh, using AI and ML by auto tagging and things like that, that I will talk to you in a minute. And then it can be served out in multiple different uh, channels. And we automatically, uh, we out of the box, we integrate with all our CX apps like Responses and Eloqua and Commerce uh, and Service. But also, it can you can build your own experiences using AI. Uh, sorry, using API first uh, delivery, and then engage audiences in different uh, phases and in different channels. Um, so next slide. The, another term that we use for Oracle Content Experience is also called CX content, and it is really an intelligent content service. Uh, it is context aware, it is prescriptive and pageless, and we'll go into that one by one, starting with context aware. Next slide. Which me, uh, just keep going. So for con by context aware, we mean that it is, uh, a, you know, it is, provides content for each uh, phase of your uh, customer journey. So in marketing, from marketing, it can attract more customers by providing content that is brand aware and specific. For commerce, we can make the same content or content shoppable. So as people are browsing the content, they can you know, 
click click it and automatically be taken to a shopping experience uh, for sales we enable the uh, sales uh, we empower the sales people as well as the customers to make the right decisions provide providing the appropriate content and for service we make it easier to, uh, by providing the appropriate knowledge and content articles so that it reduces the cost and what is uh, what is really great about oracle content uh, oracle content experience or cx content it is automatically already integrated into all these uh, cx applications from oracle so you can get to it from where you are within your within the application next slide we talk a little bit about prescriptive so keep going so what, by prescriptive, what we mean is we, we use a lot of image recognition and uh, text recognition say, uh, technologies so that as you load content into the system or as you create content, we automatically tag it and we know that a particular image, for example, talks about breakfast or croissants or uh, uh, mountains, rivers, so that it's, uh, it's very easy to find the content. Uh, later on, and also as you type, you might as you might be typing narratives, etc. We can suggest uh, other content that you can use in it, uh, including images and videos and things like that. So that's what something we call smart authoring. And then the final thing is that we also prescribe based on since we're getting since this content is not a silo, right? It's integrated into all these channels. It's breaking the silos from uh, content just within marketing or just within sales or just within co commerce. We have all these signals that we can use. And we can personalize the content um, in each and every content in, in each and every content experience that you might have. And finally, our next slide. We need the content to be pageless. This is what I alluded to at the beginning. So keep going. So now you can take this uh, connected content, right? Since it's available in every uh, it is available in every marketing ex every CX experience, but also take it further. You can build it. Um, build a voice experience, you can build an AR VR experience, you can build it, build your own uh, React website or any JavaScript website that you might want to build. Uh, because it provides um, API first uh, content that you can take anywhere and it's be uh, automatically deliver it through uh, CDNs, etc. So this is really the power of Oracle content experience. And that was a brief overview of Oracle content experience. And then I'll hand it over now to Sudhir for how we have, we have been using it to transform some of our own experiences within Oracle. Yeah, thank you, Tejas. So, uh, so I'm gonna be talking about three uh, different use cases, which I'm sure every enterprise has. And we in Oracle partner, uh, as I mentioned, I'm responsible for in implementation for Oracle, but partner very closely with Tejas and team to make sure we leverage the strengths of the product and uh, if basically we can showcase how Oracle is leveraging for the scale of Oracle, I'm sure it makes the journey easier uh, for rest of the customers. So there are three typical use cases in any company. And I'll be talking about all three. First is an intranet centric use case, only meant for employees uh, content. And then second use cases and what we call extranet use case where you may need to collaborate uh, on the content with an external partner or customer or an agency. And then third, finally, is typical use case for a, a public external facing corporate sites or a micro sites kind. So I'll be talking about all the three use cases and focusing on oracle.com uh, uh, towards the later part of the uh, presentation. So in, in the intranet, uh, typically every company would have three different kind of uh, scenarios. First and foremost, where any uh, uh, content journey starts is where a uh, multiple set of people need to co-author and collaborate on uh, on a certain pieces of document or certain pieces of content. So that's the one use case. Uh, and then secondly is there are various line of business centric websites and you know, websites for a particular departmental. And then third use case in an intranet is a very specific microsite you know, for this particular product launch, for this particular event, where you want to bring in various content and assets together. So we have a use case for all three of it in our intranet, which we commonly refer as my.oracle.com. And first and foremost, uh, where it starts is, uh, we have uh, a separate tenant of OCE, uh, which is meant only for intranet. 
uh, which we refer as Aura Docs. That's where first and foremost uh, is where we leverage a lot for our document collaboration use cases, which is integrated with Office 365 as well for co-authoring scenarios. And as you would see, based on the size of a company, we have close to 260 terabytes of a content over there. We uh, uh, grow close to a couple of terabytes a month over there. A very significant set of uh, uh, downloads as well as uh, user requests in millions uh, which uh, come on that purely from a document-centric use cases perspective. And then uh, once you are more working in a document centric or collaborating with uh, with different employees, you may be collaborating using Office 365 or just sharing your files. Other use case which often uh, comes around is a tiered workflow of certain set of approvals, you know, whether it's a approval with your management chain or other uh, groups you are working closely and collaborating with. And that's where we have leveraged the integration capabilities between OCE and Process Cloud Service, which is part of Oracle Integration Cloud, so that for any piece of a content, uh, there is a very easy way for any employee to start a workflow process, uh, which we call a typical L1, L2 uh, or two levels of approval process without any um, you know, specific development, IT intervention, uh, but make it more self-service so that uh, that power of uh, workflow along with the document uh, is, is available for all the employees. Uh, then the next use case instead of our intranet use case uh, is basically a corporate intranet level site. I have a screenshot of our uh, intranet homepage, which is uh, developed uh, using OCE. And OCE, as uh, Tejas was talking, you know, can be leveraged in two different ways you know you can or multiple different ways not just necessary two ways but when i'm presenting i can leverage it what we call as a site builder capabilities uh, of oc where you know you have a typical web page which is in this case an intranet web page which has been built uh, uh, with bunch of components uh, which brings an experience together and this is what it's showing and uh, this is uh, uh, OC tenant is uh, configured to allow for SSO via the SAML and all the user provisioning so that it is accessible only to Oracle employees uh, is managed through some of our identity systems, part of an OIM. And, and then another uh, use case, as I was talking, uh, which is very important, which applies uh, uh, is the intranet microsites uh, with, uh, with, with the scale of an Oracle. They're often very specific use cases for uh, specific product launches or specific product related uh, information and things like that. Uh, we allow and leverage some of the governance capabilities which come with an OCE. The governance capabilities of OCE allow uh, any employee to basically uh, request for a website, which is a microsite, pick through a set of th corporate allowed themes and templates and get a website up and uh, available to them within a minutes. And, but the most or the biggest value which OCE brought for us was uh, uh, allowing to enforce certain standard themes and templates. So we you would have heard about Redwood as a brand uh, uh, from an, uh, our last year Oracle Open Word. It allows, so we have a great selection of components in our component libraries, uh, which is uh, leveraging our brand. So which employees can cherry pick on their microsite and spin off a new microsite up and running uh, within within a couple of minutes. Uh, so it's just that ease of drag and drop, leveraging site builder, those capabilities and be able to have a compelling uh, experience. So we have close to 2000 microsites and we do see requests for new microsites pretty much uh, every day happening in a very self-service manner. And this is kind of a set of various components we have. And we have a monthly uh, cadence where we release new sets of components. Uh, and the other big value is from the employee's perspective, there is no code to be developed. It's mostly about configurations, uh, you know, uh, and site builder provides for capabilities of my components with settings. So employees uh, will always get a library of components which align with the brand uh, and the look and feel, and they just need to be responsible for populating the 
uh, their specific content by going into the settings panel and one of the screenshot is uh, uh, showing how the settings work out. So it's just that reusable uh, and configurable components power which comes with an OC. And again, this is one of that use cases of uh, uh, OC which we adopted and you would see other aspects of the pageless aspects also we have adopted. Because in a, in a scenario like intranet where you have hundreds and thousands of employees, uh, this seems is the most suitable um, uh, implementation in the sense that we provide the power of the site builder which comes out of the box and uh, allow employees to be able to assemble the site. And so that's why we took this approach from an intranet. But as we talk about the corporate site, we went more a pageless route and we'll, we'll talk about, uh, about that as well. And I think the other advantage uh, when we build in framework like OC with a set of library of components, because none of the employees are uh, you know, adding any custom JavaScripts of their own what this guarantees is that all the intranet will always be uh, accessible you know ada compliant is always uh, each and every component will be can be delivered across all the devices so as part of the themes and the component delivery we we test across all the devices and accessibility so it helps to enforce some of those standards and one of the values which employees started to see when we started to transition our intranet, which was sitting inside the firewall, we brought into an OCE, which is a managed pass services. Now the intranet is accessible to you on the go. You know, it is accessible via SSO and two-factor authentication. So, uh, so that uh, allowed to further mobility. And specifically, if we see in the current circumstances of COVID-19, where we are having employees be, uh, having an access to intranet from their uh, devices, not in Oracle network, uh, provided, provided that extra benefit perspective. And when you're building a, uh, you know, a website, whether it's for an intranet or equally applicable for uh, external sites is there are often use cases what you will categorize as transactional kind of a use case you know it's not just about content and assets and that's where some of the integration capabilities of OCE comes with a VBCS the VBCS stands for visual builder cloud service which is a low code development environment another managed pass service so we have a VBCS uh, and OCE set up for an integration to be able to talk to each other so that if uh, uh, I can build my business object in uh, VBCS and be able to expose it. A simple example is on a website, on our intranet, we need to provide uh, you know, a, a rating and satisfaction or allowing employees to do a comments. And comments are more transactional in nature, which need to be tracked. You want reporting, metrics, dashboards, things like that. But from an experience of an employee coming, it's just a website and they do not or should not have to necessarily go somewhere else. So that's where right within the context of a website, um, uh, you know, I have a small uh, expandable area where I can add a content, but ultimately it, it is written into, uh, uh, into the VBCS where I can get some richer, uh, uh, richer uh, reporting and metrics out of it. And then another uh, interesting use case, is, as uh, Tejas was saying, OCE provides a rich set of integration with whole suite of Oracle products. And this is just another kind of an integration. It's a microsite. We have uh, what we call as our help site for line of businesses to have access to various helps and tutorials to be able to uh, build new microsites or assemble new microsites. So OCE, because of its approach where uh, or the pageless approach, each of the content items uh, are accessible over the REST API, which can be easily accessible by an ODA. ODA stands for Oracle Digital Assistant, another Oracle product so that uh, uh, using the natural language, you know, employee can come to the website instead of navigating, they are trying to find something. They can just in a natural language ask a question uh, to a digital assistant, which internally is retrieving the content from an OCE to be able to get the same piece of an inform in information. So your information, which is in this case is a content item, which is stored and managed in OCE, is accessible via navigating through the web interface or is for those people who may not navigate but just like to ask a question, but the source of the information is still in the content item, 
can in natural language ask the question and reach the same content. And, uh, and as uh, Tejas was showing in the demo as well, now the same content is accessible via the same digital assistant bot uh, exposed via uh, Slack as a channel. So uh, digital assistants have a notion of various channels and Slack being one of the channel and this web being another channel kind. So again, it brings uh, in the power of leveraging the ecosystem of the products uh, because of the out of the box integrations, which come out of the OCE as well as the way it is REST enabled. So it makes it really easy to be able to consume those. And uh, and I'm sure those who are specifically wearing an Oracle IT or an or a IT specific kind of a cap will also be thinking when you deploy any cloud product uh, or any product, uh, even if it's an on premise, is to understand what are the governance framework do we have, or what do we have the capabilities of a governance. And this is again um, referring in the context of intranet, but our same deployment. Uh, mimics exactly the same for our uh, corporate public uh, website also. So uh, we have leveraged various capabilities within OCE for, for, for one of the first things which happen when you're dealing with content uh, and the documents is some of the e-discovery needs. So in a large company like Oracle, where there's a constant ongoing litigations, there's always a need to be able to discover certain set of content and documents and be able to retrieve them for an e-discovery purposes. Or second scenario could be is that uh, how to dynamically manage the access, whether the access is to my a particular microsite or the access is to my uh, you know corporate site or the access is to my set of folders uh, or collections of assets which I need. Often in a company, you know, the uh, uh, they are uh, geared towards an organizational structure. People in the sales have access to A versus those in IT have access to B and those kinds. So OC provides the rich set of APIs where we could do the integration with our HR information so that based on the organizational hierarchy, we have a dynamic group set up so that if an employee leaves a group or leaves the company, you know, the access to that particular set of collections or the assets or the folders is dynamically managed on a kind of a, a nightly basis perspective. And then the second thing which happens whenever you run or, or manage any CMS, what happens to the content uh, when an employee leaves the company? Because a lot of assets or the content being created are more uh, from an organizational or departmental perspective. And again, uh, we, uh, with leveraging some of the OCI, OC API capabilities, we have a whole deep provisioning process perspective. And the last but not the least is around the retention management. You know, we spin off uh, hundreds and thousands of microsites, websites, each website uh, or certain set of pages, be able to apply various retention cycles around those of uh, where if it has not been updated for X months, then does it need to get archive and things like that. And again, uh, sh showing few of the screenshots of the, uh, you know, UI, tools, which in this particular scenario, we have leveraged Oracle Apex, which is again a rapid uh, application development tool or a low code development tool uh, because of the nature of the certain uh, other integrations we had to do. Uh, but uh, behind the scene, it, can, it is leveraging the standard OCE uh, APIs to be able to provide uh, that level of information back. Similarly, uh, self-service user interface, for employees to request for any kind of a dynamic uh, organizational based groups uh, kind. So those are some of the governance uh, scenarios within our intranet. And now let me talk about another use case, uh, which is uh, important use case is about when you need to uh, collaborate and share, uh, share a site or share set of assets or collection of assets with some restricted set of people. So this is, uh, the data classifications for these sites or these set of assets may be still highly restricted data. It's not public or anonymous data, which needs to be, uh, you know, crawlable uh, by the search engine. But this is a set of a data which is meant for a certain set of audience, whether that audience is your partners or those audiences, your uh, customers. Or scenario could be a marketing team which may be engaging with an agency 
and uh, need to uh, collaborate and share assets, uh, uh, brand assets, uh, so that they have access to those brand assets, as well be able to retrieve, uh, you know, any uh, deliverables which agency may be delivering. But being able to do that in a kind of a notion of a site or a workspace, so that you just have one URL to go to and you get uh, all your necessary assets assembled for you in one page. So for that same scenario of what we call is this extranet use case, uh, in our case also called as secure sites, we have close to 2000 sites. We pretty much add a couple of new sites every day. Uh, the data is around almost eight terabytes uh, uh, over there. And, uh, and we pretty much every day come across lots of use cases. We leverage the same governance capabilities where an, any employee who has a need to collaborate uh, can you know uh, leverage those here uh, governance framework request for new site and again get the same set of standard templates themes and components which apply uh, apply for intranet also uh, as part of our ci cd pipeline and the release of themes and components uh, we also package and deploy the same set of uh, themes and components on our uh, secure site or an extranet so that if i am sharing uh, a microsite or working with a partner or a customer on this kind of a microsite, whether that my microsite is purely for information sharing or my microsite can very well be for uh, you know document collaboration I may need to be doing, but I'm creating a microsite for, for that sharing experience. So this is just an example of uh, what we have kind, what we call is a day one onboarding uh, uh, set of microsites. So often Oracle is a large company, has uh, multiple m a activities which happen uh, previously often when we were to communicate with those uh, employees uh, there is always a lag in communicating so you know there is a set of messaging and information which needs to show up in the intranet of that particular company but based on the uh, processes it may take a few weeks or days but now what we do is on the day one of acquisition we can create a day one onboarding website which has a standard content, standard theme, standard template, everything standard. Uh, you know, our marketing corporate uh, communications team on a self-service manner can uh, spin that off, make sure it is accessible to all thousands or tens of thousands of those uh, external users uh, who have not yet gone through a whole onboarding process. Eventually, they will have full access to intranet but that doesn't happen on the day one so it's again that kind of a use case and the interesting thing with the secure sites is pretty much every day or every week we hear and work with our various lines of businesses on an entirely a different or a new use case kind and and so now the third uh, and the uh, one of the most important use case i want to talk about is the corporate public sites webs uh, website use case and which is necessarily an oracle.com use case but in case of an oracle you know we have an oracle.com we have java.com but like any other company we have lots of other micro sites as well uh, and we'll talk about that so th those uh, significant number of micro sites or or uh, you know a brand site like oracle.com which is significant in size so so in such cases uh, we have a separate oce tenant uh set up to uh, cater to this external facing corporate uh, public sites and for all the three use cases i described the intranet the extranet and now the corporate public sites we do have three separate tenant setup of the oc in this scenario um, we have let's a tenant uh, setup uh, in phoenix but we also have a dr infrastructure setup in ashburn so that the same piece of an assets so or the contents are always accessible even in case of any disaster and we leverage uh, all of these corporate facing websites are front-ended by a cdn which in which is an akamai in our case but uh, but uh, could be uh, anything else in other scenarios too so i'll talk for, uh, first uh, with the uh, scenario of a, a website which is java.com website this is a website which is in terms of a magnitude is a relatively small site you know it's a content centric site uh, which has which is translated and localized into 15 different languages 
it uh, it took, uh, has been running on our platform, which is a web center sites, which is a product uh, or a uh, WCM uh, product from Oracle on premise. And uh, was be, uh, but this is a site which does have very significant number of uh, page views. This is a website which might be accessed by anybody who needs to download a Java. So this is more of a B2C scenario where you know you might have a quick and running on your uh, desk home workstation and you are trying to download Java and you have some issues or some questions. So this is that kind of an audience that caters to it. So have. Uh, uh, close to 300 million monthly views and in the views including the HTMLs and the XHR kind. So we are um, working right now or very close to its rollout. We are in the final phases of our business UAT sign-offs. So this is how in simple it would look like that the entry traffic for java.com comes through our CDN Akamai and then we have uh, we will be uh, we are running it in OCE uh, in an active active mode with the uh, uh, with primary being in Phoenix and uh, DR being in our Ashburn but both uh, um, uh, both front ended with Akamai but in, this is a scenario because this is a scenario of a much smaller website as compared to oracle.com where our total number of assets are you know uh, in few thousands few number of pages are in few hundreds that's why we decided to leverage again the OC site builder capabilities over here and uh, leverage the rest of the capabilities of synchronization to build uh, uh, build uh, the DR infrastructure uh, with it and again we are very close to go live in final UAT so you know the 30 days will we are hoping to be able to cut over and uh, go live with this then the second scenario which is a little bit more complex scenario you know as that that's why i wanted to show java.com and oracle.com and we have we have a lot more scenarios as well uh, of various microsites uh, as well which i'm sure uh, various line, uh, companies would have as well when you look at a complex brand site there always you know you have uh, hundreds of country specific sites you do support uh, hundreds of locales you always have very you know complex uh, language fallback rules set up for your languages and the countries and uh, uh, you know we have uh, close to half a million number of assets and this is a site which does take significant uh, views as well and again, in this case, I'm counting the views for HTML and XHR versus pure page views. So historically, we have run this in on-premise. Uh, we have run this with uh, on our two separate content management systems. So one being uh, our web center sites content management system, and another being our web center content uh, content management system. There are use cases because of which over the course of last seven to ten years we have had two cmss running because when we say oracle.com it also includes for us oracle technology network oracle partner network and a whole suite of other microsites which run all between those two cms so that's what is the breadth of the ecosystem looks like so we and this is just in a uh, diagram shows how it looks on premise today we still front-ended with the uh, with Akamai as a CDN, but we were running in our Austin data centers and the UCF uh, on-premise data centers, leverage typical load balancers and the mid-tiers and databases uh, running web center sites and web center content. This is basically the state before we started our journey for oracle.com to the cloud. So when we were trying to migrate or starting to migrate oracle.com, we knew based on the complexity of the website we knew the complexity of how big it is and also we wanted to take an opportunity to leverage the uh, real pageless capabilities of oc which brings the agility uh, we would need uh, to be able to leverage and reuse the content you know across our uh, emails and the campaigns and everywhere so we decided to break down this project into multiple phases we we took the phase one as the easiest route uh, because that was mostly a lift and shift uh, to OCI route. So what we decided to do was we did a complete lift and shift of our, our oracle.com infrastructure. Instead of running on premise, we brought it into OCI. Uh, so we brought it into same Phoenix and Ashburn data center. Uh, and then the second phase two is about an hybrid architecture. We started to wanted to bring in OCE 
alongside our current uh, Web Center sites platform so that we can eventually move towards phase three. So phase one and phase two, we are mostly complete. Uh, phase three is where there is a lot of work in progress and hopefully in the next couple of months we'll share a lot more about that. But I'll talk individually about each of the phase. So this is like the phase one where we are still running the same tech stack of our, our current CMS platforms. Uh, uh, in our case, I'm showcasing Web Center sites because it is the one which runs the, the largest portion of the Oracle.com. Uh, so this is again a similar architecture you would have seen uh, to on-premise, but now we are leveraging the LBAS. We, are, we have a, a delivery tier as well as a management tier. Those who are familiar with Traditional on-premise CMSs or WCMs of the world, they always have two tiers. One is a management and another is a delivery. Uh, management is typically more inside the firewall. Delivery is in your DMZ, and which is responsible for delivering of the content. We, we set up a virtual uh, uh, network, uh, set up a separate set of subnets to architect the same solution of what we were running uh, on-premise into an OC, uh, OCI so that we could very rapidly do this lift and shift and start to get the benefits of being in the cloud. So if you see, and the reason we uh, took this approach was because in this approach, there is no impact to the publishing team or to our site visitors. It's just mm, the content which publishing team uh, or the infrastructure which publishing team is leveraging or the UIs which they leverage, there's no impact because at the end it's still web center sites which instead of on-premise is running in OCE. So the impact wise it was uh, uh, very minimal impact, but the value it started to bring us is an improved performance. When uh, you bring in the network uh, or, and the architecture of an OCI, which is our Oracle's Gen 2 cloud, you start to realize a significant performance. You know, performances, performance gains from a publishing, performance uh, gain from a you know, backend delivery time uh, to the CDN. So we could very easily translate to that. And then as we start to reduce our uh, you know, on-premise footprint, it does translate into a reduced IT cost. So it, it uh, kind of as a phase one was a non-brainer for us to, to do that. And we do not have to worry about on-premise. And this allowed us to start to leverage more and more capabilities of uh, Oracle Gen 2 Cloud. And so this is just a diagram of a typical architecture. Those who are familiar with the, uh, you know, a cloud infrastructure deployments or IAS deployments. You know, this is uh, showcasing or trying to indicate a set of shared services we build. Uh, again, that's not just for Oracle.com set of shared services or the hard leverage across various services. Uh, when you do a lift and shift from on-premise to OCI, those are a necessary set of shared services. Also set up a se uh, separate VCNs and the subnets. And so it's pretty much a similar model what we are having an on-premise. It's mostly showcasing that portion of the ar architecture over here. And then comes the phase two. And, and again, in our case, uh, we started to work on phase one and phase two in kind of a parallel. So it's not necessarily a serial activity, uh, but uh, we have been working both of them in parallel. That's why pretty much we went live with both the phases in very close proximity. In the phase two, what we were trying to achieve as a goal was we wanted our publishers and our mindset and our content to start getting aligned to OCE because whenever you do change, uh, uh, you know, any uh, WCM or a content management platform, there is a paradigm shift. You know, the specifically, if you are uh, leveraging a WCM or a CMS, which is very page centric in model, you know, you always think in terms of that particular page, database.html, you know, that's my URL and that's my page. But if you start to have a mindset to start moving page less, it's a more of a paradigm shift. It is a technology shift for sure, but it's also a bigger paradigm shift. So what we decided was we start to bring in OCE and start to introduce our publishers, start us to start building out the right asset models, start building the right data models, uh, and but still leverage web center sites, the same web center sites which in the phase one we brought in to uh, be our delivery tier to start doing the assembly of the page. 
So the pages stay the same from a uh, end visitor to our website, uh, but the content which in those familiar with web center sites will know about the notion of a widgets. The widgets on the pages were dynamically pulling the content from OCE via leveraging the OCE REST API. So it's still leveraging the headless CMS capabilities or the pageless capabilities of the OCE, but the page is getting delivered remain the same. So the left portion, you know, of the delivery side of the picture didn't change. The extreme right side, the content management side of the picture started to change, where there is sections and areas of the uh, larger portion of the website is still running, leveraging web center sites, and we started to bring in OCE in parallel. The reason, as I said, the biggest uh, benefit of trying to do that in parallel was it allows for an incremental migration. As I said, as a website with you know over half a million assets and hundred uh, or close to three hundred fifty thousand URLs, you know that transformation is a process or is a journey versus. Uh, and but again, this is a journey to to start to redesign and rethink in a modern architecture or a modern pageless architecture. But the value we did with the phase two was it started to allow for this incremental migration so that both can coexist uh, next to each other and have zero impact uh, uh, to, for our visitors to our website perspective. And also the bigger value where in a large company like Oracle, we have, we have hundreds of uh, you know, website uh, publishing team, they started to get familiarized to an OCE platform and started to provide a feedback. And again, we work closely with Tejas and team and provide those feedback, which helps start to, uh, uh, to improve the product itself. So this is just an example of a website or a microsite we rolled out a uh, few months back, leveraging the hybrid architecture is a go.java. Again, it's a smaller, relatively a much smaller site, but it allowed us to start thinking headless, start thinking pageless, where the authoring of the content, what you are seeing uh, on, on the left side of the screenshot is happening within the OC interface. And the right side is uh, basically the delivered page, which is getting delivered and uh, uh, being surfaced through Akamai kind. So, so another screenshot just depicting the same, where I'm still leveraging the, you know, my site plan tree, or the navigation trees of my existing CMS, which is providing me the delivery tier, but I'm leveraging those widgets or the contents behind the widgets are coming uh, uh, from, uh, from OCE. On my same page, I could have few widgets coming from OCE, few widgets coming from my current CMS, so that it allow me uh, for that coexistence part I saw. Now, third is our final phase, which is our phase three phase. This is where we are currently focused around. In this phase, our goal is that we replace their web center sites as a delivery tier and bring in a few independent rendering framework. And the independent rendering framework like React.js, uh, JS, as well as Oracle Jet, so that we can leverage the best of the modern technologies of the component-based architecture, but we have our uh, content being managed uh, within an OCE in a model uh, which will allow us to uh, uh, for a true headless or a pageless kind of a capability. So this is the phase where we are still work in progress. And the reason we wanted to uh, want to reach this final stage are the reasons which they just described in the beginning that uh, once we bring in these uh, uh, independent rendering frameworks or the modern rendering frameworks, it allows for our rapid development of our modern web applications with leveraging a lot of reusable components. So that's why we are currently in that journey and investing uh, investing into that. So that's our final phase, and this is what pretty much. Uh, will be happening as we complete this phase. So with that, uh, I'll mostly pause and hand it back to Rachel. Thank you, Tejas. Thank you, Sudhir. We're going to open up to questions now. There are a couple that came in through the Q&A. If you have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. I'll go ahead and start. Um, Tejas, I think this one is for you. Is there an integration with CX Unity with OCE? So yeah, the short answer is that uh, we are uh, working on it right now. Uh, so CX Unity has, um, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but this is basically our common uh, 
attribute store where all the CX products will be storing customer interaction information and then leveraging it. And so OC is also going to be working on it. Um, the, it is on our roadmap. Uh, so so we can, I don't have any more details than that right now, uh, but pretty sh shortly the OC product management team will start sharing the roadmap with customers on CX Unity. Great. Another question for you, Tejas. How can you purchase OCE as a CX customer? Do you need to buy a pass or a UCM SKU? Okay. So yeah, so basically when OCE was first rolled out, so it looks like somebody knows about OCE. So when OCE was first rolled out, it was rolled out under universal credit model, uh, which is a pass service, uh, which can, you know, as you know, but yes, uh, you do not need, uh, so as a CX customer, you don't need to buy universal credits or be a pass customer. Uh, we have uh, uh, SKUs available for OC for CX, um, which you can buy a subscription SKUs and it works perfectly well with your other subscription SKUs. Uh, so that should not be a problem at all. So. Great. Another question, it looks like this is our last one for now. Sudhir, this one's for you. Why did you use separate OCE deployments or tenants for your Oracle use cases? Yeah, and, and this is primarily because we, uh, we have separate data classifications, uh, which will be any company where traditionally, you know, intranet and public corporate websites are separate. So allowing to have separate tenants allows us to have a secure layer of security in the configurations and the settings which comes in an OCE so that let's say if I'm managing a document uh, or a piece of an asset within my OCE tenant and I set it to public, under no circumstances I would want my content which I am classifying as meant for my company suddenly becomes accessible outside the firewall or, or becomes accessible to out another set of users. So OC at the tenant level provides certain set of configurations to say that this set of my tenancy is only going to be accessible to only my employees and the employees will get defined through IDCS groups so that uh, only employees who get provision through your HR databases would get access. But in my other tenant where um, I do want that it to be accessible to for my site visitors. I wanted that level of security and level of an isolation so that under no circumstances my intranet, my extranet and public content because of a human mistake can ever get mixed together. And the, uh, the beauty is that um, OCE as a product allows for the tenant administrators to make those configurations and settings so that that can never happen that uh, some of these content boundaries can be crossed by anybody. Great. Well, that is the last question we had in our queue for Q&A. If anyone has any other questions, you can enter them there, or we will provide an email address in a second that you can reach out to us and ask any follow-up questions you want. Sudhir, if you could go to the next slide. Thank you all so much for joining. We'll wrap up a couple minutes early, maybe give you some time back in your day. Um, but check out the blog site for some samples, some codes and implementation details um, from Sudhir and Tejas and their teams. Um, after this, the webinar replay will be available within 24 to 48 hours. You'll receive a follow-up email with instructions for how to access the replay and find other Oracle at Oracle webinars. If you have any questions or would like to schedule a meeting with Teja Sudhir or any of our Oracle experts, you can reach out to oracle at oracle-content underscore ww at oracle.com with any inquiries you might have.